I'm Marlene Frankie with the American Bespoke Tailoring Academy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you how to pad stitch and shape an under collar. The under collar is a foundational element in a bespoke jacket in that it provides both structure and shape for the top collar. It's made out of two different types of cloth. The first type of cloth is a linen. And the linen is a very stiff and rough type of cloth. The second type of cloth is melton, and the melton is very thick and soft. The under collar will lay between the melton and the top collar. In order to provide us with the shape that we need, we need to cut both of these pieces of cloth on a true bias. Now, what does that mean? Normally, when we lay a pattern, we lay a pattern on the grain. So our fabric or our cloth grain will run both vertically and horizontally, and we're laying it on the vertical. In this particular instance, we're laying our pattern across the grain or at a true 45 degree angle. And the reason we do this is so that we get an additional amount of flexibility and pliability in our cloth because we'll be stretching and shrinking this under collar with the heat of the iron after it's pad stitched. And so having that true bias will allow us to do that much easier than if it was cut on the grain. So the first step in making your under collar is to cut it, cut your pattern out on a true bias. After you have your pattern cut out and your two pieces of cloth ready, you'll base the two of them together. And as you do that, you're just going to smooth your hand very gently over your melton as you baste. And what that's going to do is give the two pieces of cloth a little bit of ease with one another and you'll baste straight down the center of your under collar. The second thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to draw a nice straight line through the center, right down the center of your under collar on the linen side. And the reason you want to do that is to give yourself a guide the other thing I would strongly suggest you do if you're new to pad stitching is give yourself one centimeter guides along that center line. Many times students focus on trying to get their pad stitches so perfect that they lose sight of the method of pad stitching. And what we want to achieve in pad stitching is bringing two or more pieces of cloth together in the most inconspicuous fashion possible. So in other words, we don't want to see our stitches on the outside of the cloth. So pad stitching requires us uh, to focus on the method and not worry about our stitches and whether they're an absolute perfect one centimeter apart. So I highly recommend that you put those guidelines in. Now, when you go to pad stitch, you don't want to take at your needle and dig it down and into the cloth. Instead, what you, what you want to do is you want to take your needle and you want to bring it down horizontally into the cloth until you feel just the tip of the needle hit your finger. All right. Now, please don't stab yourself and make yourself bleed in doing this. So be very careful. It doesn't take much pressure to bring it down and into the cloth until you just feel the tip. Once you do, you can bring it right back up again and through to the other side. I'm using a piece of machine thread that has been run through a little bit of wax to give it some additional strength and also to heat, keep it from getting tangled. So 
the reason we would want to use a very thin thread is because once we put the top collar on, we don't want to see the impression of any stitches coming through our cloth. So using a very thin thread will help us achieve that. As you pad stitch, and you're pad stitching one centimeter apart, a couple of things to keep in mind. First, you do not want to pull your thread very tight. You just want to let your thread lay there once it comes through. And second, you want to roll your under collar around your finger. Again, we're giving our under collar shape in pad stitching. We're not just bringing two pieces of cloth together, but we're trying to give the, pad, the under collar shape through pad stitching. And that shape is what's going to allow this beautiful under collar to sit very beautifully around our neck. It's also the pad stitching is, and the shaping and giving the under collar the round that it needs will also help us when we go to uh, shape the under collar with the heat of the iron. So that's very important. Also, to make your life a little bit easier, I hope that you're using a thimble. And if you don't know how to use a thimble, the ABTA does have a very nice short video on how to properly use a tailor's thimble. And so I highly recommend that you use a thimble in pad stitching because it'll be a lot easier on your fingers if you do. And also a thimble helps us work very quickly. It allows the tailor uh, the speed and agility while tailoring. And so it's one of the most important tools that a tailor uses. So I'm going to continue pad stitching. A little bit about our under collar. We're not going to be pad stitching this entire under collar. My pattern was eight centimeters wide. My under collar pattern was eight centimeters wide but I'm only going to be pad stitching about five centimeters. And the reason we only pad stitch part of the under collar is for two, there's two reasons. First, once the under collar has been permanently attached to our jacket, we're going to go in and we're going to cut and shape it. So it's not going to continue to have this very blocky square shape. So we're going to need to cut some of it away. Second, we need to have uh, about a centimeter loose so that we can tuck our, our top collar between our linen and our melton when we're basting it on. So our under collar in all, once it's finished, will be about two and three quarter inches wide. If you'd like to learn more about the collar, what it's made up of, and how it works dynamically with the jacket, there are a couple of resources for you to consider. First, the ABTA has a nice video on how to make a collar pattern. So if you'd like to learn how to make your own collar pattern, and then use it to make your under collar. There's a very nice video out there that will help you do that. Very quickly, I've come to the end of my row and I wanna show you what we need to do next. So once we finish this first row and I stopped approximately two centimeters from the end of my under collar. So what we wanna do next is we wanna stagger our stitches. So we don't wanna come down to the end of our last pad stitch. Instead, we're going to come over that half a centimeter that I told you, and we're going to bring our first stitch on the next row 
in between the last stitch. So we're going to stagger them. And we're just going to come over half a centimeter. And we're going to continue to roll our collar, our under collar, around our finger. So you can either roll it just slightly like this, or you can tuck it around your finger completely, whichever is more comfortable for you. And when you run out of thread, it's very simple, which I just have. So what we'll do is we'll take a new piece of thread, I'm going to run it through my beeswax and then press it out. And then you'll just stick your needle in the last uh, stitch you made and just let a little bit dangle through and continue on your way. So it's that easy. If you, another resource that you can access to learn more about collars is the ABTA has a very nice blog on the under collar and its relationship with the jacket, what it's made up of, why, how it all works together, how the, the under collar and the lapel should work with each other. And so if you really want to learn a lot about the different elements of a jacket, these two, uh, these other resources will help you gain a little bit more information about the under collar. And I think that would be very important to know. So I'm going to continue pad stitching my collar in this fashion and Instead of having you sit here watching me do this for the entire time, I'm going to let you work on your under collar and I'm going to come back and show you how to shape it with the iron. But what you'll do in the meantime is continue pad stitching and rolling this around your finger. You can see my under collar is starting to take a little bit of shape from the roll. So you'll continue to come down and work your way up and back until you come to about a half inch off of uh, the end here. Uh, excuse me, not a half inch, about a half a centimeter off of the end. You won't be able to pad stitch beyond that. And then you'll come and put another one or two rows to the right of your pad stitching this way until you're only left with about three centimeters or about one and a quarter inches. So I will be back to show you how to shape the rest of this under collar. Now that our under collar has been pad stitched, I just want to show you what it looks like when it's done. So you can see it's got this beautiful little roll to it. And uh, if I just flatten this out slightly, you can see I ended up pad stitching and there was just a little bit left uh, right at the end of my collar stand here. And I left about three centimeters uh, up top to allow for shaping and to allow for our top collar to be eventually tucked in. Now, very quickly, it's important to understand that we have our collar stand, which comes up off the neck, and then we have the collar's fall, which lays down onto the shoulder. The collar stand is about two and a half centimeters or one inch, and the fall uh, is, ends up being about one and three quarter inches. So once we have our under collar pad stitched, what we want to do is we want to mark our collar stand so that we can separate the collar stand from the collar fall. So I'm going to come in and mark that two and a half centimeters. And the other 
important area on our under collar that we need to mark with our pattern is our shoulder. And I had marked this previously, so I had those little marks there. Why is this important? Because when you think about the under collar and the shape that it needs, it lays basically flat along the back of the neck and it curves around the shoulders. So we need to know where our shoulder line will be on our under collar in order to shape it properly. So I've marked that on my under collar. I've got my collar stand, I've got the collar fall, and I've got my shoulder lines. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little water and I'm going to put some water right in my shoulder area on the collar stand. I'm just going to wet that. And now I have a very hot tailor's iron and I mentioned that the back of our collar normally is straight. So I don't want to shape the back of my collar stand. I really want to concentrate on shaping around the shoulder or around, yes, around the shoulder line here. So when I press this, when I shape it, I'm going to first soften the area that I put the water on with the heat of the iron. And then I'm going to lay my iron flat where the back of the neck is. And I'm going to very gently shape and turn, pull my, my under collar around. And I'm concentrating just on the collar stand. And as I shape this around, what's happening is I'm stretching the outer part of the collar stand and I'm shrinking the inner part. The line that separates the stand from the fall is really the break line of the under collar. And so I'm really, I'm really shrinking the break line and stretching the outer part of the under collar or the collar stand. All right. So I'm going to turn it this way. So you can see now I've got a nice curve and I'm going to wet, here's my, my collar brake line, my collar stand and my shoulder area. So I'm going to put a little bit of water there. And as you notice, I'm not extending beyond the brake line, okay? Just within that area. I'm going to soften it with the heat of the iron and then I'm gonna keep my iron flat at the back of the neck and then just gently pull the collar stand around, curve it around and stretch it. It doesn't take a lot uh, for the collar stand to stretch. It's not a very big area, so you shouldn't have to fight a lot with it. You shouldn't have to do any heavy pulling or have a battle with it, if you will. Go to war with your under collar, it's not necessary. So you can see now we've got two beautiful curves on our collar stand area. Now we need to work on the collar fall. Now, as you can see, the collar fall, there's a lot more area there to deal with. So we're going to approach it in the same fashion where we're going to concentrate on stretching the outside and shrinking the inside by the brake line around the shoulder area. But what we need to do, is so we're gonna do the same, we're gonna soften this. We're gonna keep it flat around the, along the back of the neck. And this time we're going to just very slowly approach this area. So we're going to be pulling it just a little bit at a time and bringing our iron into that area a little bit at a time because we have a little bit more to stretch there. And so instead of trying to take it in one big chunk, if you just go very slowly, 
and just pull a little bit at a time, you'll see that it starts to cooperate. So we're still continuing to, str to stretch the outer portion and shrink the inner portion by the break line. What's important as well when you're working with stretching and shrinking your under collar is that you ensure that the area that you've moistened with the water is dry because it really doesn't do much good to put all that water and put the time and effort in and then lift your iron up before that area has had a chance to, to fully dry. So you can see I'm just very gently curving this around, coaxing it a little bit at a time, and it's starting to curve very nicely. If you don't get this right the first time, you don't have to worry. It's not a disaster. You can actually put some water back on your collar and press it out flat and start all over again, as it might take you a couple of tries before you get this right. But the most important thing is that we keep the back of the collar flat and we just round around the, uh, the shoulder line. I think mine could use a little bit more round in this area here. So I'm just gonna coax it a little bit more. Also what's useful is using a tailor's iron. The tailor's iron gets very, very hot and it's heavy and so we use a tailor's iron so it'll do the heavy lifting for us if you will if all you have to work with is a home iron that's fine then you can just put it on its hottest setting and it might take a little bit more coaxing when you're working with your collar but it should it should do the trick just might take a little bit more uh, stretching and shaping. Once you're satisfied and both sides of your under collar are uniform or shaped exact, what you'll want to do is take your collar stand and fold it down and just a little bit of water, just moisten it with a little bit of water, not much, and then press that down like so. Making sure that you maintain the shape of your collar that you just put in as you do that. If you find that your collar has is not straight along the back and it's and it looks more rounded like like this for example all you need to do is just pull back this area put a little water on this area and just pull it back a little bit or pull it forward rather pardon me pull it forward a little bit put some water and just press it and it'll it'll come back It'll lose that round. Okay, so there we have our beautiful pad stitched and shaped under collar that's all ready to be basted into our lovely bespoke jacket. It was such a pleasure sharing this information with you today. And I hope you've enjoyed learning how to pad stitch and shape an under collar. If you have any questions, you feel free to please reach out to me at info at the-abta.com and I'll be happy to help you in any way I can.